What's up guys, welcome back to the show, go back to another video. And in today's video, we're going to be working on the E36 M3. Uh, as you can see from the title of this video, we're going to be pretty much gutting the E36 3 I want everything out of the interior to get it ready for some like door card deletes, to get it in for some like sports seats, uh, custom steering wheel, all that good stuff. And then obviously we need to fix all the little things with this car to get to pass smog inspection um, before we actually do the manual swap. This is probably going to be one of the biggest projects I've ever done because I've never actually done any transmission removal of any of my cars let alone an entire swap but I have a couple boys like Erlan and Blake that knows everything about manual swaps and they've done it before so hopefully gonna be partnering with them and hopefully getting this build a proper manual gearbox and not only are we doing a manual gearbox but we're doing a custom and I, I, I'm not gonna get into that too much but I mean for those of you guys who follow me on my Instagram you guys will see what parts I've already gotten in and uh, oh my god, this build is going to be so exciting. For those of you guys who actually watched the first episode with the E36 M3, you guys saw when I started up the car, it just kept on wanting to die. You guys will see that in a little bit, but that's basically because of this boot apparently. And I'm hoping that's the only issue that we have that's causing the car to die immediately. So we're going to try to get this thing fixed so at least we can move the car around and not have it die constantly on us. And also, before we actually get into getting the full interior, I did get a full set of four. I'm going to show you guys what's going on with this. This is for the Nissan Titan our tow rig. We've been building this thing little by little bit to be the ultimate tow rig and also look pretty sick. So I think we should actually do the, tow, the truck thing real quick first because uh, at least we can get that out of the way and just focus on the E36 M3. For those of you guys who have not been following the truck build, basically we got some rough country wheels, some rough country tires, rough country six inch lift kit, rough country sideboards, and a rough country front grille. So we've been honestly work on this thing little by little. We also got the front LED bar. I'm trying to make this thing look super, super, super sick. And honestly, for the money, this thing is really coming together. This is so far a 10 grand um, like like build so far it's under 10 grand and it's looking so much better than my last truck in my opinion and I'm enjoying it so much more but yeah guys since we had to get some custom wheels um, behind this cap right here um, is the bolt and everywhere sells lug nuts in sets of five not six and on trucks for those of you guys who have trucks they're actually six so I've only have five on this side five on the other side and five on all these so I just ordered a set of four and that should complete it entirely it comes with the exact same keys and so now we have two keys as well so let's go ahead and get these caps off and just go ahead and add that extra lug nut just for that peace of mind I've already towed with this and I've already driven over six hours to LA back and forth with no issues but for that peace of mind just in case we're towing I don't want any of these lugs to break so let's go ahead and add that last one just for that ultimate peace of mind settled let's start working on the e36 let's go ahead and give his first cold startup i'll show you guys what i mean how it instantly dies Just like that guys, we got the car in the garage. <laughs> We're still missing that grill. But yeah, if we go ahead and pop the hood, uh, the shocks somewhat still work, which is kind of good. Uh, but yeah, since we did the smoke test, we found that we actually have a crack in our boot right there. And I think that is the reason why the car is actually shaking and it wants to turn off. So hopefully after replacing that boot, we shouldn't have this issue anymore. So without further ado, let's go ahead and try to replace that boot. I think it's the first thing we should do. This is the before guys, like look how rough this thing is. It's got a tear right there, it's got a zip tie, rips all over this one right here. Yeah, that's destroyed. This one is spongy, way easier to squish. This is, it feels like a rock, honestly. So uh, yeah, this is how it's supposed to be. Looking a lot better. Let's go ahead and install this bad boy. And just like 
at that, guys. We got the brand new boot in there. Everything is reconnected. We got this reconnected. We got that reconnected. We got the hose in the bottom of this reconnected. And uh, yeah, this is so much more spongy. We already had and remounted all this stuff. I noticed that this hose right here, or this pipe, oh dang, is disintegrating. Uh, so that is no good. So we're definitely gonna have to get a new one of these off of eBay. I think this is the alternator cooler right here. We're definitely gonna need a new one of these off eBay. I don't want any of that stuff actually falling in there. So that I'm gonna have to order pronto or go down to pick a pull or something. I think it's, yeah, you just disconnect from like right down here. Yeah, right that screw right down there. So that should be a pretty easy replacement. Uh, this part right here that was connected to it is just, oof, destroyed. This one was destroyed all, from all directions. So thankfully, uh, we're getting these two out. We're gonna have to order that other hose. But so far, the car should still start up and sound absolutely amazing. I mean, not sound good, but run good. So at this point, guys, the car should run good, like how it originally did when we first got it. But it's not, still not gonna sound good. We still need those uh, gaskets for the exhaust. But uh, as for now, let's get in the car and just see, will it die or will it run good again? Guys, there's something about working on older cars I absolutely love. I don't know what it is, but I, I don't know. I just feel like BMW made it less complicated back in the day. And I think that's why these cars are going up in value. It's a lot of fun for the money. All right, let's go ahead and start this bad boy up. Woo! Sounds like a turbo diesel. All right, keep an idle. All right, sounds pretty good. So far, so good, guys. Definitely need to get the lights for the, all this stuff. We'll be working on this little by little, guys. Definitely need a radio in this car as well. This thing does not work. Yeah, normally when I put it in reverse, the car will start bogging. But no, it's 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 being real good. Thank the Lord. So the next step is, guys, is to remove the interior. Um. Yeah, it's gonna be a mission, but I am super excited. So I think first things first, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove all the seats before the door panels, um, just so we actually have more room. And I just really wanna get this seat out. <laughs> it, it just, I, I just cannot wait to see a full gutted interior. Never done that before. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just remove this seat. So this is what we actually have so far. This bottom section, I don't even know if it's saveable, but I'm sure somebody's gonna want it when you buy the entire interior. I don't know if he's gonna want it just to take some pieces off and get the actual leather, send it off to a couple places. Uh, that's probably what this is good for. As for the driver's seat, driver's seat, as you guys remember, don't move, doesn't move back and forth whatsoever, and it has huge pieces of it missing. And uh, I might sound crazy to some people right now, but this is still worth something to the right buyer because somebody's gonna want this to restore it. This is the original color. This is the original seat. So yeah, this has at least some kind of value to it. If it's not much to me, it means a little bit to somebody. And uh, honestly, instead of just throwing this away and throwing that away, somebody's gonna want it because somebody that buys this seat is gonna be looking for the other ones. This is actually in really good shape. So the top half, honestly, is in amazing shape. Uh, we just have a little tear there, which can get fixed. And obviously this can get fixed, this little thing. Other than that, this thing fully works back, forth, up, down. This is in really good shape. Obviously that just needs a little bit of cleaning up as well. I'm gonna actually clean that before I actually list it up for sale. But uh, yeah, they will be including the seat buckles as well. We still have a lot more of the interior to do. I'm gonna be ripping out the door panels in a minute now. Just trying to figure out a way to remove this. This is actually in really good shape. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but I never knew the E36 has some pretty cool cup holders. Like check this out. This is the cup holder for it. What does this do? Oh, I think it's just a lever to pull it. But yeah, there's some storage in here, which is kind of cool. And it has two cup holders. Like, how cool is that? I never actually knew that. And again, really good shape. So somebody, um, if he doesn't want the bottom, at least he's gonna be getting it for the top. The top is in really, really good shape. As for the carpets as well, I think I'm gonna be ripping out the carpets. Uh, it's just, guys, it's in really bad shape. And uh, somebody's gonna know how to detail it, clean it up, and perfect it. For me, I just don't even want it. I think I'm gonna go with either black carpets or no carpets. It's, that's the way I'm gonna get about it. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and see if we can rip this bad boy out. Now that we actually have the rear seats out, I actually didn't know it actually has this kind of like foam thing to it. It already kind of looks like a seat delete if we clean this up properly. But we still have all these wires that I kind of want to delete. So down the road, I do plan on fabricating my own little seat delete because nobody's selling a rear seat delete on an E36 M3 or even an E36 sedan. I just don't get it. Um, as, as for the coupes, they're everywhere, but for the sedans, there's none. Now, as far as vacuuming and cleaning, guys, we're gonna go do that hopefully later. I'd rather take it to my local place and vacuum it over there because over here, I don't have the proper vacuums and all my tools 
tools. Um, as for now, we're gonna try to continue to remove as much things as possible. That means the door panels as well. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna regret this because I do love these door panels. These are Modena door panels and it just looks so, so, so nice. Um, this is like the luxury line. It just looks so good. But at the same time, I know if I'm gonna be hitting the track, touching wheels, um, working on the car and getting back to the interior, I'm gonna ruin this interior. So it's probably better off for somebody that wants to get it for their collector's car. Definitely a way to go with this interior. But as for now, guys, I've never actually removed an interior on an E36. Let's go ahead and try to remove this door panel. And just like that, guys, we got the driver's door panel out. Honestly, guys, this is so easy to take apart. And this is what I mean by how I actually like the older BMWs. So I don't know if you guys can see, but this basically spins. So to actually remove the speaker, this basically one part of the speaker goes into the front of the door panel and this piece from behind it, you literally just keep twisting it and it unscrews and you basically just tighten it together or loosen it together. There's no tools needed to remove these speakers. And I'm talking about both of them. We're gonna actually add these two speakers to our race car because this is also gonna be my daily. I'm gonna be keeping this so it can actually make the door panels look pretty good. Because once we actually get our door car delete, I want everything to function. I also do want my mirror switch as well to be on the door panel. I want everything on the door panel. I want everything to function the way it should. And I actually like about it when you actually do a door car delete, your door latch is actually mounted to the door, not the door panel. So I can actually rock this until I actually add my door panel deletes, which I actually really like. As for the rest of this stuff, guys, I'm actually just gonna box it up and wait for our door cards. As soon as we get those in, we're gonna be reinstalling all this, and it's gonna look so good, guys. Full race car. Um, as for this carpet, guys, we're gonna have to figure out a way to remove this, because it's looking pretty fugly, if you ask me. Let's go ahead and work on door panel number two. Now that we got the full interior out, guys, <laughs> this thing all together, the color just looks so good. But yeah, now that we got the full interior out, check out the interior. It is an absolute mess. We definitely have to junk all this stuff. So what I'm gonna do is actually go ahead and go to a car wash, junk all these little pieces, um, vacuum out as much stuff as I can. And then I need to find somebody that can actually fully detail this interior, at least the carpets. That's my main thing. I want someone to steam clean it, deep clean it, because uh, I think that actually the, the golden accent would look really good with the black. So let me know down below if I should be keeping these carpets or completely gut them. I just don't know how I like, I don't know how I feel about just having a bunch of wires exposed, but let me know down below guys. But yeah, before actually going out of the car wash to vacuum all this stuff out, I think I wanna go ahead and get into the trunk as well. I really don't know what's back here. I have a bunch of little things just around here. Um, so one thing I absolutely hate about the E36 guys is this floor mat. This floor mat is just so flimsy and uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but literally just folds into a bunch of pieces. I, I just, I just think it looks really tacky and really, it just, like, it just, it's really dated. As for this piece, I think it's supposed to go up. I don't know why it keeps falling down. Um, I think I'm definitely gonna be leaving this up for sure. Uh, I'm just gonna be probably deleting this and deleting any other junk that's back here. So, uh, let me set you guys up and see what I can actually get out of this trunk. Now that we got the trunk dialed in, ready to get vacuumed up, and the interior ready to get vacuumed up, let's go ahead, take the car out, go on a drive. Hopefully that intake boot was the thing that actually fixed the car from like freaking out, because it's the only thing I got from the smoke test. Um, but worst comes to worst, we'll smoke test it again, and now it should have more pressure if we do have another issue, but I think, I think from the startup earlier, we should be good. So it is just to sit down to the car wash and just get this thing vacuumed up. Happy to say guys, the car's honestly running so good, like better than it did on the first day. But you guys can hear how loud that is. That is the next thing we gotta fix, and I hopefully should fix our check control light as well. I mean, technically that's a check engine light, actually. <laughs> this thing needs a cleaning of a lifetime. I can't wait to get it vacuumed up. <laughs> guys, this thing just sounds crazy though. <laughs> what a tractor. <laughs> oh buddy guys we are here let's go ahead and clean up this disgusting mess 
And uh, yeah, I'm trying to find somebody to actually deep clean carpets. I might actually have to remove this carpet and take this somewhere that can actually deep clean it. Or if someone is mobile, I'm gonna be hitting them up front. So I really need this stuff cleaned ASAP. You already know how to get them gloves. We are ready to go. Just like that guys, we are back home and uh, the carpet is at least clean. It, at least there's not a bunch of junk flying around everywhere. And uh, yeah, I mean, it is what it is. So the next goal is honestly, as I was driving, I noticed that this thing was flying around. Unfortunately, I do think I need this temporarily till I get a cage in here uh, because I do want to end up putting like a three point harness in the car. So we'll do, we will need a cage and we'll need to strap the, the seat belts from the cage to the uh, the seat or whatever. I don't know how that exactly works. I've never done it before, but I'm excited. So this, I'm gonna have to keep it temporarily. I'm gonna have to figure out a place to mount this. Maybe I'll mount it down here for now or something like that. I think that's a pretty good spot for it. On Actually, that's a great spot, honestly. But these rear seat belts honestly gotta go. We're never gonna use them. So I honestly didn't wanna even touch this stuff until we got this at least somewhat clean. I guess at this point, let's go ahead and take this stuff apart. And I think we need to get back there to remove the two seat belts in the rear. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, get into that. Yep. I I think this is what we're actually gonna need. So these two bottom ones look pretty easy, but I have a feeling that this guy right here is gonna be a little bit of a pain in the butt. This thing though is in really good shape and I actually really like it. I actually do like how this thing is centered. I don't know if it's like a rear speaker, the rear defrost, but it looks so good. I don't know, I've never actually seen that in a sedan. And also these are in really good shape. The only thing that's a really rough shape is the headliner. I'm gonna be making a video on how to restore this headliner. I'm gonna be taking it out, completely redoing it. Probably gonna do an Alcantara. And uh, I don't know if I should do the sides as well, but we'll see we'll see and it does look like we have to remove a lot of stuff guys so it's actually all very easy I pretty much removed the clip there the clip here popped up this thing and then popped out the light thing first which is this little guy and then unplugged it and then just literally pulled this bad boy out let's go ahead and do the same exact thing to the other side And just like that guys, we got those out. Honestly, they only had like one screw holding it down and then the other side just kind of lifted up from this little tab piece here. Very easy stuff. I don't know if this has any value to it whatsoever, but I'm trying to recoup as much money as possible on this car. We bought it for $6,000, clean title, one owner, and uh, we're gonna absolutely transform this thing manual, track build, it's gonna look absolutely insane. That's my vision. But if we can sell the interior, sell any other leftover parts, like for example, these wheels, some things on the front end, it's a little future idea. If you, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna spill the beans. But basically, I'm trying to see if I can get this car for around $4,500, $4,000 after selling a couple things and then fully build it. That's the goal because I feel like if I can keep the budget under 10 grand, it'll be insane. So yeah, guys, if I can get this for around four, six grand, that's a huge budget. I mean, that comes to show, yes, what I got planned for this thing and I'm just super excited for it. But at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble those pillars. They're in really good shape and I do wanna preserve uh, that stuff. Plus, I feel like the, the roof won't sag as much if I put all that stuff back in. So uh, yeah, even these speaker covers need to go back in. Without further ado, <laughs> Let's go ahead and get those things back in. And just like that, that is mounted. We got everything situated in the back. The tabs did break on that pillar, so we might need a new pillar, but uh, it is what it is. Now, the last two things I wanna go ahead and do is put in the carpets. This one's gonna be really easy. This one we're actually gonna have to find some nuts and bolts for because it was just dangling in the first place. I have a feeling this is gonna be a little rough, so I'm just gonna show you guys once. Inside, three, two, one. 
left. And guys, I knew this is gonna be difficult. That is not sitting right. I don't know how to sit this thing. I don't even think it's from the right car because look at the way this looks. And also look at that. This isn't even from the right car. So, uh, or honestly, I'm thinking about getting a sheet of metal and just deleting all this as well. What do you guys think? Because I think this all just looks kind of cheap, tacky, and flimsy. I'm thinking about changing all this out. Let me know down below if we should do that. But in the meantime, guys, that is gonna have to conclude the video. We do have cool overs coming out for this car. We do have to find out what kind of wheels you want for this car. We have a bunch of other things coming out for this car. We do need to get some seats. This is going to be absolutely insane. I'm super excited. It's one of those builds that I'm just honestly really, really, really happy. It's a little different than our normal builds. So that's why I'm just super excited to do it. I remember my first E36 when I put my first couple bucket seats. I got some NRG ones. They weren't really nice and they weren't really comfortable at all. This time I'll make sure I do a right with some Sparkos and I just cannot wait. It just sounds like an absolute dream come true. I still haven't bought them yet. So I'm sure I'm going to, before I even click the buy now button, like $800 a seat or $1,000 a seat. It's going to, ooh, it's going to hurt. But I mean, I think it's going to be worth it. But anyway, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and wash up, get a meal. I'm absolutely starving. I think we made a lot of progress on the E36 M3. Smash that like button if you guys enjoyed this video. Without further ado, I love y'all so much. Remember to stay humble. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.